So hello everybody, let me know you can see me, let me know you can hear me, let me know you can see my slides. Uh, I will just pop a comment in the chat to make sure it is working. So welcome to this Facebook Live on the topic of achieving inner peace. I'm going to talk about what I've learned about beating anxiety. So just go click to the next slide. Okay, so anxiety can be driven by your physical symptoms. So for example, if your health score is about a one or two out of 10, then your body is in a state of stress and that can affect your physiology. Anxiety can also be affected by our environment. You know, if you feel you're in an unsafe environment where it isn't safe for you to relax and let your guard down, then that can be a factor. But in this Facebook Live, I'm going to talk primarily about the psychological aspects of anxiety. Because for me, when I had MECFS, they were very real. So why is it important to address anxiety? I can see a few people watching, so do say hi. Let me know wh where you are in the world. And... Yeah, just do let me know you can see in here. So, yeah, why is it important to deal with anxiety? Well, we know that anxiety triggers the fight, flight, freeze response. We know this, I used to do free talks and I would sometimes get people to close their eyes and imagine they are sitting on a roller coaster ride. And you could see that some people would smile because they love roller coaster rides but more people more often you could see their body tensing up and that was actually having an effect on their physiology. Researchers know that by studying chess players for instance who are high level chess players just by sitting at a board moving small pieces of wood they can be generating the same amount of stress as athletes. Um, so Michelle saying hi from Christchurch. UK. Nice to hear you, Michelle. So that's the first thing, is that anxiety can trigger the fight-flight response. And that hinders our body, our body's attempts to heal. And the problem is if we keep activating the fight-flight response, then this can activate our neurology. So neuroplasticity is the concept that whatever we practice, we get good at. I've talked about this before, but Eleanor Maguire from University College London studied the brains of black cab drivers. And she found that part of the brain, the hippocampus, was enlarged compared to the general public. Black cab drivers have to learn 25,000 streets, which is amazing. I've tested a friend who is a black cab driver. So that's the principle. Whatever we practice, we get good at. If we practice learning an instrument, we get good at that. If we practice gener generating anxiety, then we get really good at that. So very briefly, my story, even before I had AMECFS, I was quite an anxious person. I can remember going on a student weekend uh, at a university and for some reason I think my two of my friends weren't able to come and I, for some reason I felt quite anxious. So Louise is saying hi from Northumberland. Um, yeah I felt very anxious the whole weekend and my whole body felt very you know at a, in a state of dis-ease. Um, I remember experiencing panic attacks and I didn't really understand how those panic attacks were happening. I remember a friend talking about experiencing them. And even though I was trained as a counsellor, I didn't really know how I could help her not experience those panic attacks or what to do. And when I had MECFS, I would generate anxiety when I was in a dip. I'd be chastising myself. I'd be worrying about how long it was going to last. When I was thinking about doing an activity, might be going for a walk or going out for a meal, I'd generate anxiety. And there were times where I kind of felt there was no end, uh, there was no light at the end of the tunnel. I couldn't see how this 
was going to end. Fortunately, I learned some stuff that showed me the following. Actually, let's move, I'll go back to my slides. Yeah, so if we keep practicing those unhealthy response, they can become automatic, they can become conditioned. You probably know about Pavlov and his dogs, that Pavlov was a uh, psychologist. He did an experiment where every time he fed his dogs, he rang a bell. After a while, the dogs would start to salivate just from him ringing the bell, okay? So, what did I learn? One of the things I learned is that I needed to have techniques. Um, sorry, I'll, I'll come, I was skipping a slide. So the first thing I learned is that it is possible to beat anxiety. I learned how to beat anxiety. I had a number of clients whose anxiety has been an issue. These are just a few. This is Sue who didn't leave the house for 18 months. This is a picture of her in Australia. This is Lisa who was experiencing anxiety. She was living in China at the time. And she, when she, she came to London to do the training and what she said to me, when she goes back to China, a friend of hers wanted to go traveling. And she said she didn't feel that she could do it because she had a lot of pain issues and she had anxiety, but she, learned she said by the end of the training actually I think I can go traveling and she sent me some pictures this is her at the Great Wall of China and she said having learned how to deal with it she was able to go traveling she, her back pain issues disappeared and she was able to sleep on trains which was basically sleeping on a wooden shelf without any issues um, this is another client who anxiety was an issue for her and she said, you know, learning how to deal with it was transformational. And this is a musician called Gary. He's actually happy for me to talk about him because he went public on this. And he was about to go on tour in America for a month with a famous jazz guitarist getting on and off of planes. And this is a picture he sent. Uh, a few days into his trip around America okay so the second thing I learned is that we can new we can use neuroplasticity to our advantage in the same way that we can use it to become really good at things that are not very useful we can learn to use it to become really good or great at things that are more useful so I learned to become much better at generating calm there is a time that in the past, the idea of even just doing a Facebook Live like this, I would have been really terrified. And I remember the first time I did do a live event, at one point I literally got completely tongue-tied and couldn't speak and blamed it on the technology. But it was really uh, an uncomfortable experience. But I learned how to get over that. Okay, so what else did I learn? So the third thing I learned that was really powerful and helpful was how to identify the recipe for those unhelpful responses. Let me explain what I mean by that. So I'll go to my iPad. So one of the things that I learned to understand is that let's imagine, for instance, you go to your front door, you're about to leave the house and you see a hungry tiger who wants to eat you. So the primitive part of the brain responds very quickly. So we experience an emotion of fear. Okay. So that's an emotion. Now what also happens, but it doesn't happen quite as quickly is that the prefrontal cortex, the part of our brain that does rational thinking, clever thinking, kicks in and in this case starts having thoughts. Oh no, there is a hungry tiger who wants to eat me. And that results in a feeling of anxiety. Okay? So that feeling of anxiety is created by us doing some thinking. 
one of the things that I learned that it's possible to notice an emotion without going to my head and creating a whole story. So if I notice some dis-ease, I don't have to escalate it. Let me explain that in a bit more detail. So yeah, I talked about that we need... Actually, did I talk about that? So some of the techniques I'd learned were like cutting the grass. If anxiety was like the grass, some of the techniques were a bit like cutting the grass. You'd, you'd reduce the anxiety for a bit, but it would grow back. So actually what I discovered is that I really needed techniques that helped me get to the roots of things. So going back to that excellent drawing I've just been drawing, um, Imagine someone starts to notice some bodily sensations in their body, which may be the result of them feeling some discomfort. So, for example, I had a client who had social phobia. She was very good at generating anxiety when she was in social situations. And she said, in the past, I'd noticed those feelings in my body of discomfort. And I'd say to myself, oh, no, I'm feeling anxious then so she'd shift from a to b and then when she was at point b she'd do the same thing she'd say oh no i'm feeling even more anxious now and then she'd get to point c and point d how many people have done that certainly that's something i did and what we can learn is to observe our responses without escalating them without having to have a conversation which results in those escalating feelings, okay? What she learned was that actually in that situation, this is an exercise I get clients to do, and you can do it now, is to look around the room, in front of you, behind you, just have a look, and put in the chat the answer to this question. Can you see a tiger? What's your answer to that question? Like to consider that that fight, flight, freeze response is designed to keep us safe in situations which are threatening. But as human beings, we get very good at activating that response in situations which are not a threat. OK, so Louise says no. Um, and I hope that's the answer for all of you. OK, so by learning how we're generating this recipe for anxiety we can learn to change the recipe okay and as i said earlier small changes can lead to very different results i often tell the story of stephen brooks who's a hypnotherapist who gave up his practice to go and live in uh, Thailand and he tells a story of sitting in his cabin in the woods and there's a knock on the door and he answers the door he chats to the person sends them on their way and he goes back to the meditation there's another knock on the door this time he says go away I'm meditating eventually they go away and goes back to the meditation. There's another knock on the door. And this time he just notices there's a knock on the door. And he carries on with his meditation. And what he says is that those knocks on the door are our thoughts. We can either have a conversation with them. We can fight them. Or we can just observe them without getting attached to them. And if we do that, they can just float away as if on a cloud. And so I also get people to think about this. If we do that, if we detach from what's going on, then the body can start correcting itself. And a concept I share is that we can be 
either operating from a place of fear, some people call that the lower self, or we can be operating from a place of trust. Some people call that the higher self. And a question I ask people, and someone reminded me of this this week, is a question I ask people to consider is, who is speaking? Is it that part of us that's operating from the lower self, from that fear place? Or is it that other part of us that can operate from the higher self? And I teach people how to access the parasympathetic state, how to access our wise self and how to access it, how to access that part of us that has the capacity for calm, the capacity for pragmatism, the capacity for wisdom. And the more we practice that, activating the parasympathetic state, the more we are using our neurology to support us. So, shared a few concepts. If you've got any questions, pop them in the chat. If you'd like to know more about the way I work with people, then put the comment in the chat video and I'll send you a short video which you can watch which will give you some insight into my approach and in that video I talk about some of the research that sheds light on the condition and you'll find out how you can have a free conversation no obligation where we'll identify some of your sticking points and a few strategies to help you move forward but for now let's finish with a brief relaxation if you've got any questions, pop them in the chat now. I'll give you a moment. If not, if you'd like a, to end with a short relaxation, just put a yes in the chat. Okay, so what I'll do is I'd like to just make sure you're in a comfortable position. And close your eyes, obviously only if it's safe to close your eyes. And I want to teach you a really simple technique. What I'd like you to do is just focus on one of your hands. Maybe you might want to just put your hands on your lap, palm down, and choose one of those hands. And I'd like you just to focus on the little finger on that hand. And what you're going to do in a moment, but not yet, is as you breathe in, you're going to say a word to yourself. Could be any word at all. Peace, calm, love, trust. And as you breathe out, you're going to say a different word. Could be one of those words that you haven't said, peace, calm, love, trust. Or a different word. And then you're going to go to the next finger and do the same thing. And then the next finger the next finger, the thumb, and then back to your little finger. If you lose your place, you just choose a finger and carry on from there. If you notice that you're thinking about something, I'd invite you just to notice that thought. Imagine popping it on a cloud and letting it float away. And I'd like you just to mentally clock what number you are for calm and relaxed right now. With zero being not very calm and relaxed and 10 being extremely calm and relaxed now. Let's just do this for one minute 
starting from now. Okay, so that was one minute. So I'd like you just to clock what number you are now for calm and relaxed. With 10 being extremely calm, relaxed. And you can put those two numbers, the number you were before you started that exercise, the number you are now. Michelle saying she's eight now. Excellent. I'm wondering what number you were at the start, Michelle, before you did that little exercise. But anyway, if you've got any questions, do feel free to get in touch or pop a message in the chat and tag me. So Michelle says you went from a six to an eight and I will respond. And Louise says, I was a four and she's an eight now, perfect. So thanks for watching, whether you're watching live or catching the replay, do leave a comment. Uh, let me know what your takeaway from this conversation is. But for now, I'll say thanks for watching and bye for now.